Thanks, Jason. And thank you all for joining us for this webinar today, where we shall be talking about how you can leverage pre-existing features as well as the newly released ones to get more value from Microsoft Sentinel while you optimize cost. If you have been following our webinars closely, you will recall that we delivered a similar webinar exactly a year ago, but what we are going to do today is recap on the key cost drivers in Microsoft Sentinel, then showcase through a scenario walkthrough how the pre-existing and new features can help you manage costs. Here's our agenda. We will begin with a recap of the key cost drivers in Microsoft Sentinel. We will then take a look at the recently released features that give you more options to manage costs as you ingest more data. We will then look at the trials and offers available to get you started on your cost optimization journey. We will then delve into how you can focus your Microsoft Sentinel costs, highlighting the new additions to the pricing calculator. And to wrap it up, we shall share with you tips on how you can optimize your costs in Microsoft Sentinel. To kick it off, let's take a moment to recap the Microsoft Sentinel pricing model. Fundamentally, our pricing model is based on volume of data ingested. When estimating your Microsoft Sentinel cost, you need to bear in mind that there are three primary cost drivers. Number one is the Microsoft Sentinel ingestion price. Number two is the log analytics ingestion price. And number three is the data retention price. If you are going to use the new search and restore features, then there will be a charge for those ones as well. And we'll get into the details of that in a moment. Also, if your use cases require you to take advantage of additional features such as machine learning, logic apps, or function apps, then those features will also attract a charge. For Microsoft Sentinel and Log Analytics ingestion pricing, we provide you with a choice of between uh, pay as you go and commitment tiers. Commitment tiers offer significant discounts as well as better price predictability compared to the pay as you go option. With commitment tiers, we provide choices ranging between 100 gigabytes a day all the way up to 5 terabytes a day. Any usage above the commitment tier level, also known as overage, is billed at the same price per gigabyte for the current commitment tier. New features. Retention is one of the areas we have made some significant improvements to help you manage costs as you ingest more data. We now offer you basic logs and archive logs as additional storage options. Basic logs are ideal for data that has traditionally been viewed as having low detection value, but are still useful for security investigations when ad hoc queries and searches are required. Ideally, the kind of logs that fit this description include cloud storage access logs, NetFlow logs, and the like. Basic logs support ingestion time transformation and passing, and are also available for eight days with the option to move to archive logs. Archive logs are designed to help you meet your compliance goals or long-term storage requirements while reducing cost barriers and management overhead. They allow you to store data for up to seven years and they can be easily accessed via the search blade in the user interface. Search allows you to perform comprehensive searches across both fresh and older data. The integrated user experience enables analysts with limited KQL expertise to perform advanced searches. Search allows you to view results as they arrive and the results are populated into a table within your workspace, which allows you to perform additional KQL joins and analytics. The restore feature integrated into the user experience allows you to restore data as old as up to seven years. The feature also allows you to promote logs back into the analytics logs tier and use them for investigation for as long as you need. Ingestion time transformation is yet another recently released capability that allows you to manipulate incoming data before it's stored in a log analytics workspace. This means that among other operations, you can drop irrelevant or duplicate data before it's ingested into your workspace, and this way you can reduce your data ingestion volume. To summarize the ingestion and retention piece, let us now look at how this 
storage tiers typically interact with the pre-existing log tiers and how they are built. Analytics logs offer full KQL syntax support, detection rules, and there are no query concurrency limits. Ingestion charges based on East-US pricing are $2.3 per gigabyte for log analytics and $2 per gigabyte for Microsoft Sentinel. The commitment tiers that we looked at earlier are available for analytics logs, and there are no charges for query execution. The data retention option that comes, with that comes integrated with analytics logs offers free retention for the first 90 days. Here, data can be archived for up to two years. The cost per gigabyte per month is $0.1. Basic logs have a limited KQL syntax optimized for such operations. Detection rules are not supported and the query concurrency limit is two per user. Ingestion charges into basic logs for both log analytics and Microsoft Sentinel stand at $0.5 per gigabyte. Any searches performed against logs in this tier attract a charge of $0.005 per gigabyte of data scanned. Commitment tiers are not available for basic logs. Data can be moved from the analytics logs or basic logs tiers into the archive logs tier. Here, the maximum retention period is seven years and the retention charge per gigabyte per month is $0.02. So pretty much 80% lower than the pre-existing data retention tier. Once your data is in the archived logs tier, you can perform searches or restore operations. Search jobs are billed at $0.05 per gigabyte of data scanned, while restore jobs are billed at $0.1 per gigabyte per day on a prorated basis with a minimum daily charge applied to two terabytes and 12 hours. Trials and offers. Let us now look at the Microsoft Sentinel free trial details, the benefits attached to Microsoft 365 premium SKUs, the Microsoft Sentinel and Defender for Cloud benefit, and the free data source benefits. The Microsoft free trial offer. This free trial offer is subject to the following limits. Number one, new log analytics workspaces can ingest up to 10 gigabytes per day of log data for the first 31 days at no cost. A workspace is considered new if it's less than three days old. Number two, both log analytics and data ingestion and Microsoft, uh, both log analytics and data ingestion and Microsoft Sentinel charges are waived during the 31 days free trial period. The maximum number of workspaces permitted is 20 per Azure tenant. Number three, existing log analytics workspaces can enable Microsoft Sentinel at no extra cost. Workspaces are considered existing if they are more than three days old. In such cases, only the Microsoft Sentinel charges are waived during the 31 day trial period. And number four, usage beyond this limit shall be built based on applicable charges for your workspace region. Lastly, charges related to additional capabilities not explicitly covered in the free trial offer such as automation or bring your own machine learning are still applicable throughout the free trial period. The Microsoft Sentinel benefit for Microsoft 365 premium SKUs. Here we increase the data grant slightly to 5 MB per user per day. We also expanded eligibility to include not just commercial, but also academic, frontline workers and government SKUs. Qualifying data sources include Azure Active Directory sign-in and audit logs, Microsoft Cloud App Security Shadow IT Discovery logs, Information Protection logs, and Microsoft 365 Advanced Hunting data. The Microsoft Sentinel and Defender for Cloud benefit applies if these two solutions share the same log analytics workspace. And the benefit here is 500 megabytes per node per day, and the qualifying tables are listed over on the bottom right of the screen. Additionally, updates and update summary tables are not included if the update management solution or solution targeting is enabled on the workspace. Always free data sources. Azure Activity Logs, Office 365 Audit Logs are free. When it comes to alerts from our first party products, so Microsoft Defender for Cloud and Microsoft 365 Defender, it is the alerts that are free. 
not the lots. So always important to make that distinction. The alerts are not billable, but the, the logs are billable. And with that, I will turn it over to Senor Javier to take us through the estimation piece. Javier, over to you. Thank you, Innocent. So hopefully you see my screen now. Perfect. So, yep, so Innocent talked to us about the different new features that are available now in Microsoft Sentinel, like the archive tier, basic logs, etc. But now we're going to take a look at how do we estimate uh, the ingestion and the cost that we're going to have in our Sentinel environment. So first of all, wanted to mention the billing documentation that we have in our official documentation. Uh, super good documents. We have three, one that is about planning, one that is about monitoring your cost, and what is that is about reducing your costs. So very good resources there. Uh, so please go into this uh, link that you see in the page in order to visit those uh, three articles, uh, and you can learn more about all these things that we're going to be talking about today. Then, so as Innocent mentioned, the main driver for cost in Sentinel is the ingestion, right? Which we measure by gigabytes per day, right? So how do we get that gigabyte per day number? So if we are moving from a, a previous sim, uh, it might be easy in some cases to capture the events per second or EPS or the number of gigabytes per day that we're already uh, consuming. So if that's the case, use that, uh, grab that formula. Uh, and if you have, uh, you're getting the EPS, you can just easily uh, use this formula in order to calculate the gigabytes per day. So basically you have the number of uh, EPS and actually let me use the pointer here. The number of events per second, you just have to multiply that by the event size in bytes. Uh, you can actually do an average of what you're seeing in your current sim. Then we obviously have to multiply by 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute, and then obviously convert those uh, bytes that we used in the in the event size uh, into gigabytes. So we divide by 1024 three times. So that will give you the gigabytes uh, per day that uh, you can then input in our uh, Sentinel calculator which we'll show in a minute. If you're not coming from another sim, meaning that you're in a greenfield deployment, there's a few resources that you can use to estimate the amount of data that you're going to be uh, ingesting. So for Azure Active Directory, there is uh, a link to, uh, here's a link to the page in the official documentation from Azure Active Directory that includes uh, sample uh, ingestion sizes for both sign-in and audit logs. Okay, so go there, Grab those numbers. You can do just a basic correlation uh, depending on the number of users that you have uh, in your environment, your, in your Azure Active, Active Directory environment, and you can calculate the numbers that could be expected. For Azure Pass resources, so the recommendation here is to enable during the free trial period that Innocent explained and monitor the daily ingestion values that you're getting. Why? Because uh, each Azure uh, Pass resource it's different from one customer to another, right? So if I have an Azure Firewall, for example, deploying bar environment, then amount of logs, the amount of telemetry that I'm going to get from that firewall really depends on the amount of traffic that goes through that firewall, right? So it's not the same if the uh, amount of traffic is a few megabytes than if it's a few gigabytes per minute, right? Also, the amount of data that is actually dropped or not. So all those different events will generate a different amount of, uh, of logging. And therefore, the best way to actually match or to actually see what uh, you can expect in your environment is to just turn it on, turn that login during the free trial period, and then monitor those daily values so you can have a, a very accurate figure on how that's going to be. If you uh, intend to bring those uh, Microsoft 365 Defender advanced hunting logs into Sentinel and all the relevant tables, you can use this query, this KQL query in the Defender portal in order to get a list of all the different tables that you have in that Defender uh, 365 portal and estimate or have an estimation of the daily uh, gigabytes per day that you can expect uh, from each of them. So please uh, take a look at this query. Uh, it will be also in, in the PDF distributed after the call. OK, what happens with other uh, data sources, like, for example, servers, endpoints, network equipment? So you can use this, um, this table that you see here in the screen for a rough estimate. We want to emphasize on the rough because, again, uh, it really varies. It's not the same having a domain controller uh, with a bunch of users than having it for a few thousand. So uh, it's important that, you, uh, you know, that we emphasize this uh, rough estimation uh, statement, but still, something that can give you a ballpark figure. So as you can see here in this table, we have uh, Windows servers with uh, high or medium uh, EPS. We have domain controllers. 
We have uh, Windows desktops, so we can we can expect for from client uh, desktops, also from Linux and Unix servers, and from different networking equipment, right? Like uh, a network firewall in the DMZ, uh, the network firewall uh, in an internal environment, an IPS IDS uh, kind of device, a VPN or web proxies. For all of those, we have the average event size. So what is the average uh, size of the events that we see coming from this type of device? And also the average uh, EPS that we see, events per seconds that we see from such a uh, device. And then obviously we transform or do we convert that into gigabytes per day. So you can uh, do that calculation much easier. Okay, obviously, as you can see right here, uh, the network firewalls that are in, in, in an internal uh, environment are the ones that are actually bringing uh, higher uh, volume of data into, into Sentinel. Okay, so let's now look at a sample scenario. So we're going to be looking at a scenario where, for example, I'm expecting to ingest around 550 gigabytes per day. Of those 550, we expect around 20%, so about 100 gigabytes uh, per day uh, of those logs being web proxy logs that have low security value. I still want to keep them in my, in my stock environment so the analysts have access to them, but maybe I don't want to have them uh, running detections on, on those logs. Then we want to keep those logs accessible, easily easy accessible with full KQL for 90 days. And then we want to move after that to a cheaper storage tier uh, and then up to 365 days, so up to a, a whole year. We expect the, the SOC to actually do searches for IOCs in that uh, data, in that long term data, around four times a month and search every time they do a, one of these searches, search across one week worth of data. And then once a month, eventually, they might need to restore a full month of archived data as part of an investigation that is wider and deeper. And they normally keep this data uh, in restore state for two days. Okay, so as you can see here, we're touching different points. Uh, obviously, here is, we're talking about basic logs. Then we got talk about the regular retention and the archive retention. Then we talk about searches, which Innocent explained also uh, during his presentation. And then we talk about restore. So we're including basically many of the different uh, cost components that we can see in Sentinel. Okay, so the main resource to do all these calculations, to uh, calculate the cost uh, of this uh, environment, some uh, an environment like this, is using the Azure calculator. So let's go to that. Uh, hopefully you can see now the calculator. Um, as we can see here, we have selected already our Microsoft Sentinel. We just type Sentinel and we are uh, prompted with uh, this icon. We just click on it and we'll get uh, this single line over here uh, for the Sentinel costs. So then we expand and then we have several options. First of all, you have to select the region in which region you're expecting to have your workspace. Then the gestion size estimation type. It can be both EPS or daily logs ingested. We prefer daily logs ingested, but if you just have the APS number, you can also use that. And then we have to enter the amount of basic logs and the amount of analytic logs that we expect. As we said, we expect around 100 gigabytes per day of basic logs and about 450, the remaining, uh, to be analytic logs. Okay. When we that do that, we already get here uh, one important thing. We get a suggestion on what is the proper commitment tier that would be more uh, beneficial for me, right? As you can see, we are being offered a 400 gigabyte per day commitment tier in log analytics and the same in Sentinel in this case, okay? So important that we take a look at this so we can uh, realize what pricing is being applied uh, to our uh, final number. As you can also see, we get the breakdown for both Azure Monitor prices and Microsoft Sentinel prices. Here you get the pricing uh, for basic logs in Azure Monitor, as Innocent explained, 0 0.5 dollars per gigabyte, and the same for Microsoft Sentinel basic logs. The ingestion for analytic logs changes, first of all, because we're using a commitment here. Okay, so we're using this 400 gigabyte per day commitment here. Uh, so the price that is shown here is actually the, the, um, the cost of the 400 gigabyte commitment here. In this case, we have a little overage, right, of uh, additional 50 gigabyte per day. That is already accounted for here. Even though you don't see that uh, change in here, because this is, the, this is just a commitment tier price, you will see that additional overage uh, already reflected. Important to mention that additional overage, those 50 gigabytes that are, that are on top of the 400 that we uh, selected in the commitment tier, are priced at the same rate as the commitment tier. This is a great advantage and great benefit from commitment tiers as well. 
Similar, we get a similar breakdown for Sentinel, as I said, basic logs already, and also the same for analytic logs. Uh, cool, let's talk about retention. So as we said here, um, the as Sinos also explained, the retention uh, is free for uh, the first 90 days, so three months. So for that, um, here we get a, the number of uh, gigabytes that we'll get uh, at the end, uh, three months that are by default for free, and as you can see, that's costing us uh, zero dollars. We had in this scenario that we wanted to keep the data for a total of 12 months, right? So a total of a whole year. So when we do that, we already get here the price, uh, 0 0.02 per gigabyte, and then the total price. Important, this uh, price that we get here is for what we call the steady state, meaning the amount of uh, dollars, the monthly uh, dollars that you're going to pay at the end of your period, right? At the, when the 12th month or actually the 15th month has already been reached, right? At the end in the state. But it doesn't really reflect uh, the status for the first few months, right? In the first few months, you'll have zero, actually, zero uh, archive price to pay because you don't have that data still in archive, it's still in the free uh, 90 days included in the price, right? So what do we do if we want to actually show the ramp up time? So how much I'm going to be paying in month three, month fourth, month, month five, etc. So we have to use a different method, like for example, um, a spreadsheet, right? Uh, like this one. In this one, for example, as you can see, for each month, I'm uh, putting here how much I'm ingesting, 550 gigabytes per day, and then obviously until the first, uh, until the third month, I'm not uh, having anything in archive. But then I start accumulating data, and that actually goes up to the total number that we saw at the end. You see, this number is at the end, uh, 4,015, uh, which is what we see over here, right? Again, steady state price. Okay, now we're gonna be looking at the search and restore cost. For that, let me actually do it first here in the slides. So we were told that we were gonna do the search across one week of data. Okay, so if we are ingesting daily 550 gigabytes, uh, we multiply that by seven days. That is a total of uh, 3,850 gigabytes of data in a whole week, right? If we just wanna calculate how much is the cost of a single search over all this data, over the 3,850, we just multiply that by 0 0.005 per gigabyte, which is the charge that Innocent explained uh, uh, for, this, for the amount of scanned uh, data that I'm going to be uh, scanning. So the total cost of a single search would be $19. If I'm going to be expecting to do around four times a month, one of these, uh, four of these searches per month, that would be a total of $77 per month. What um, what happens with restore? So if we calculate the restore, we were told that we were going to be doing a, a restore of a whole month of data. Okay, that's uh, 550 gigabytes times 30 days, around 30 days, obviously depending on the month. That's a total of uh, 16,500 gigabytes uh, in a month, and we just multiply that by the number of uh, dollars per, per day and the number of days that we want to keep the data. As we mentioned before. The restore is paid at 0 0.10 dollars per day, and then we multiply again for the number of days that we want. We said that we were going to keep that for a couple of days. That would be a total of 3,300 dollars per month. Just to show you how this looks uh, in the calculator. So we have uh, two components, the data restore and the search queries and jobs. Important differentiation. We have here, as you can see, two items, search queries and search jobs. These search queries, although they are priced the same, 0 0.005, they are for basic logs, okay? If we're talking about uh, archive, we use search jobs, okay? Although the price is the same. Important, there's currently a typo in here. Uh, so we're already working on fixing it. It says per day, but it's actually the number of uh, searches that you do per month, okay? So in this case, we want we are gonna do four per month and we wanted to do it through, uh, over 3,850. 3, so again, the $77 that we saw in the slide as well. For restore, uh, we were told that we were going to do uh, over a full month of data, a restore, that's 16,500 as we saw, and then we want to keep it for a couple of days. That's again, the 3,300 that we got uh, from our calculation. Okay. So with that, I think we, we looked already at uh, estimation and let's look at uh, optimization now. Jeremy. Thank you, Javier. Let me share my screen. All right, 
Let's explore the options we have in terms of optimization. We have summarized all the options in this table according to three pillars, injections or retentions, which is the main cause of Microsoft Sentinel operations, which might or might not be relevant to you, and built-in benefits, which gives you a list of benefits related to Microsoft Sentinel. We'll go through most of the items here, except for a few, which are straightforward due to the interest of time, but you'll find relevant links to the documentations uh, in this deck one is available to you after the session. First, let's focus on injection optimization. As you all know, this is the main cause of Microsoft Sentinel. Therefore, it's recommended to only ingest logs, which will be consumed by your SOX team. That means you either select the log sources that you need, or in most cases, you might need to filter logs from the same log sources to reduce unwanted logs or noisy events. Filtering can be done at source level or at injection time. And in the next few slides, we'll walk through both options. Filtering at the source level is preferred when possible as it can save network bandwidth. Now let's examine filtering at source level. We will go through the filtering options for our supported agents and plugin. First, let's look at Microsoft Monitoring Agent or MMA. MMA allows users to specify which event set to collect, such as minimum, common, or all event. Here there's a table which events uh, here there's a table which event if tables of which event will be collected for each event set and you can find out more in our documentations. However, the downside is you cannot specify which specific event ID to collect or to exclude. If you are looking for a granular filtering method, Azure Monitor Agent or AMA will be the options. Besides having the same event sets configurations as MMA, AMA also allows user to define a more granular filtering criteria using XPath query. As you can see from the sample screenshot, you can define which event IDs to collect on which source machine. There's a dedicated AMA webinar available in our Microsoft Security Community channel. Do check it out if you want to learn more. Staff or syslog collections is a common collections method especially for network devices where logs are being forwarded to a set collector with agent install. It is recommended to check whether your devices allows you to configure the log type to be sent so that you only receive the log types that you want. For example, logs with critical or warning serenity instead of information. Otherwise, you can filter the logs at the set collector level by using our syslog config file. In this example, we'll create a new config file called 55-filter.config. The first sample demonstrates how to filter the message which contains a specific username. You can create complex logics by leveraging regex and conditional statement such as if and end. And lastly, a real world customer example to filter logs from specific Cisco ASA version. There's also a webinar on log forwarding and Ceph filter in our Microsoft Security Community channel. Some of you might be using Logstash in your environment as Microsoft has provided a Logstash output plugin. Now, similar to Ceph and Syslog, Filtering can be done in config file and with the statement like growth to match a line using conditional, such as if statements to control uh, which events to be processed. Right, so we have gone through the options of filtering at source level. Now let's examine the approach for filtering at injection time. 
This is a new feature that allows users to perform data transformations at ingestion time, such as filtering, obfuscation, and enrichment. It also allows passing at ingestion time to align with ASIM schema. This requires a workspace DCR to be created and the transformation of filtering logics are defined via KQL. There was a webinar presented by Javier and Eddie recently on this topic with deep dive on use cases and sample scenarios. I strongly encourage you to take a look if you haven't seen. Let's say you have logs which are high in volume but provides little value to your SOX team, whereby those logs are not needed for detections, but you have intention to ingest them into Microsoft Sentinel, consider using basic logs ingestion type. Basic logs is a new ingestion type at a much cheaper price compared to the standard ingestion. It includes eight days of retention, which after that can be sent to archive. I'll talk about archive in the next slides, and the logs cannot be used for detections, but can be used for hunting or log search. Therefore, this ingestion type is suitable for logs which are noisy and low in value. Currently, it supports app traces, container logs, and all tables created with DCR-based custom logs API, but more tables will be supported soon in the future. Do check out our docs for recommended log sources for basic logs. Retention is probably the next major cost besides ingestion. If you have the need to retain logs for long term. Uh, previously, we only have workspace retentions, which gives you up to two years of retention. Now we have a new retention solutions called archive, which allows you to retain data up to seven years at a cheaper price. Archive retention is also a built in solutions without any dependencies and it supports all tables. So in terms of optimizing your retention, so retention costs, it's recommended to leverage the new archive retention solutions. You should also define a granular retention at per table level, as you can see from the screenshot, because you might not need all tables to be retained for long term. Also, as mentioned in the previous slides, where basic logs only provide eight days of retention, these archive solutions will be a great feature to combine with basic logs injections to reduce your costs. When the logs are stored in archive, you can access those logs either using the new search or log restore features. Here are some tips for search and log restore to get the most value out of your archive data from cost perspective. First of all, you should define a search and log restore process or policy in your organization. For example, limit the users who can perform these actions. When performing a search, check if there's any search tables that contain the data that you are searching for so that you don't need to make another search. Also, make sure that you manage the lifecycle and retention of your search tables. For example, your search tables will follow your workspace retention settings. If you have a workspace retention configured for more than 90 days, you should change the retention of your search tables to 90 days if you don't need to keep them longer than that. As for log restore, the data are being charged on daily basis. Therefore, you should delete the restore tables when not using it anymore. Next, let's discuss about leveraging Codeless Connector Platform or CCP for your API-based custom connector. CCP enables you to connect any data source, any data sources that exposes a public REST API endpoint. It is a fully SaaS service without any requirements for service installations. It includes health monitoring, 
and without any running costs. So if you have a requirement to build a custom connector that collects logs from a public REST API endpoint, consider using CCP when possible, as opposed to Azure Functions or Logic Apps. Another important point in optimizing costs is to choose the right pricing tier. As mentioned earlier, commitment tier provides you a discount on the cost based on your selected tier compared to pay-as-you-go pricing. This also gives you predictable costs for Microsoft Sentinel. For users with commitment tier of 500 GB per day and above, they will be eligible for dedicated cluster, which provides additional values, such as better performance for cross workspace query. I'll discuss more about dedicated cluster in the next slides. If you have multiple workspaces in your environment, even without Sentinel enable, you can link them to your dedicated cluster to leverage the discount of cluster pricing model. For example, let, let's say in your organization, you have two Loyalix workspaces, one with Sentinel enable and another one without. The Sentinel enable workspace is ingesting an average of, let's say, 300 uh, GB per day, while the other workspace is ingesting, ingesting, let's say, an average of 200 GB per day. So you can provision a dedicated cluster with 500 GB per day of commitment here and link the two workspaces to it. There are also two building types available, such as building on cluster resource or building on the workspace. So this provides you with some flexibility, especially if you need to charge back. Now, also just to recap, um, for customer with Microsoft 365 E5, A5, F5, and G5 um, uh, licenses, there's a Microsoft Center of benefits of data grant up to five megabytes per user per day. Discounts will apply automatically on both Microsoft Sentinel and Log Analytics, and you'll find the total saving on billing. Here's a list of data sources um, which are in scope. For example, Azure AD Logs, Microsoft 365 Advanced Hunting Data, and many more. You can also find more information in our documentations. In terms of best practices, you should find out your total data allowance per day by multiplying the total number of licenses you have in your organization with five megabytes. So with the total data allowance in mind, you should only ingest the log sources that you, you require. There's also a built-in workbooks called Microsoft Sentinel Cost Workbooks, which will help you to visualize your Microsoft Sentinel benefits ingestion. Another quick mention is the Microsoft Defender for Cloud Benefits, which Defender for Server Plan 2, which gives you 500 um, max of free data ingestion per day for every machine connected to the workspace. Data allocation is for security data types, such as security events, and the free ingestion is only applicable on log analytics ingestion charges. The data allocation is a daily rate average across all machines. And your total daily free limit is equal to the number of machines multiply with 500 max. Next, let's discuss some of the Microsoft Sentinel related resources which you might or might not use in your environment. For example, you might use Azure Notebooks for advanced hunting, Azure Functions for your custom data collector connector, and Azure Logic Apps for playbooks or even a custom connector. Let's discuss some of the guidance in planning and managing costs of these resources. First of all, for Azure Notebooks, 
you should schedule automatic start and stop for the compute instance so that it won't be running when not being used or during off hours. You should consider using reserve instances pricing and start with a low priority VM to reduce the cost. Secondly, for Azure Functions, you should review Azure Function hosting plans, such as consumption, premium, and dedicated plan to choose the best plan that supports your function performance and cost requirement. There is a dedicated documentation on Azure Function Planning and Cost Management. Lastly, for Azure Logic Apps, in general, the cost of Logic App is quite low and neglectable, but it's important to review the available plan for Logic Apps to determine which ones you need. There's also a docs on plan and manage costs for Logic App. We also like to discuss um, about bandwidth costs, which will incur if you are sending telemetry from one Azure region to another region. For example, you might have Azure VMs in a separate region from a Microsoft Sentinel. This only affects Azure VMs and data sources based on diagnostic settings are not affected. All right, so the costs can be eliminated by having a Microsoft Sentinel workspace in the same region as your VM. But as you already, if, but if you already have an existing workspace in your environment, as mentioned earlier, this is not a big cost. And most of the time, this is not a major factor, um, you know, for user to have another workspace. As you can see from the sample calculation below, let's say we have, 1000 VMs where each generates um, one gigabytes of um, logs per day and sending data from US to um, EU, uh, Europe regions, it will only cost about 1500 per month. All right, so in conclusion, this is not a major cost, but we just want to call it out for awareness. All right, so um, in, in this slides, we have compiled a list of useful links and resources that will help you to learn more um, about this, about the topics that we just discussed. Um, do go through them once you have um, the, the deck or once the deck available for you to download. And that sums up the, uh, the optimization sections. Now, um, I would like to um, close the session with uh, again a recap or a summary, right? So first of all, um, we talk about the recap on pricing, right? And then we also talk about uh, the trials and some of the offers uh, or benefits um, which are available. We also showcase um, some of the new features that we released recently uh, and do try out those features and um, you know provide feedbacks uh, to us uh, if you have any. And uh, you also seen the estimations uh, or calculations um, you know based on a use case scenario. Um, and lastly, um, you know some best practices on optimization. So um, thank you today for the um, you know the, for for joining the session. And also thanks to my colleagues, um, Innocent and Javier for co-presenting with me. Uh, with that, I'll hand it over back to Jason. Great, thank you. Um, thanks to the team who helped answer questions. Uh, we do have a few that I'd like to bring up. Uh, the first one is, if I have log analytics, uh, log analytics workspaces enabled for my audit logs, and that is being ingested with Microsoft Sentinel, would I be able to generate a report of all the users in my Azure AD with their last login dates? Yes, yes, and I was just answering in the in the chat. Indeed, you can. So there's a workbook out of the box that is called Azure AD Signing Logs that will actually give you that kind of view. Uh, you can select uh, whatever username you want, 
and it will give you the last logins from which, from which device the, the, the login was performed, if it was successful or not. Uh, also, it gives you a summary of all the different logins, uh, location, device, if they apply conditional access or not. So definitely go into the workbook section in Sentinel, search for Azure AD, and you will see several uh, workbooks available that will give you this kind of information. Great, thank you. Uh, the next one is, can you restrict who is able to perform archive searches and restore operations? Can you repeat, Jason, please? Yeah. Can you restrict who is able to perform archive searches and restore operations? Good question. So both operations, they create a new table, as you probably have seen on, as you probably have seen in other webinars, right? So if uh, someone performs a search, it will create a new table called uh, underscore SRCH. And if it's a restore, it will have a suffix that is underscore RST, right? In order to create those tables, you need log analytics contributor permission. Right. So an easy way to restrict uh, who can access, who can perform searches and restores is just denying that uh, or not granting that role. If that uh, individual doesn't have the log analytics contributor role, uh, uh, they won't be able to actually run searches or restores. Great, thank you. Um, the next question is, uh, does the search cost include analytic rules queries? Um, not sure if I understand. I think it means that if, if you run a search, um, so it, it depends, right? If you run a search over a period that includes analytic logs, you might get some analytic uh, logs in there. But if normally what you would do is uh, customize the time frame where you're doing the search to just uh, look for data that is in archive, right? So that's, that's the normal thing to do. And therefore you will only get uh, logs from the archive tier. Great, thank you. Uh, next one is how is a search defined? You want to take that, Innocent or Jeremy? Yeah, so again, answered in the chat, it's defined from the search blade. So when you go into the search blade and you specify uh, what table you want to search from, how long uh, you want to search back, then that's that's where the definition, I mean, that gives you an idea of how we define a search. Great, thank you. Uh, the next one is, uh, what are the differences between data ingestion through Azure Monitor and data ingestion through Sentinel? Yes, so data ingestion into Azure Monitor is uh, ingestion into the database that, that stores your security data. So this, these are actually two separate services. Um, Log Analytics provides a specific set of services that Sentinel benefits from. Um, so there is a charge for uh, bringing data into that uh, database, if, if you like, your security data. Then once it's there, you've got additional features like archive and, and stuff like that. But then when you think about Sentinel ingestion, uh, Sentinel is actually a SIEM and, and really that is a solution by itself in terms of the value you get from detections, UEBA and all the stuff that a SIEM does. So the way we bill for the service you get out of a SIEM is by the ingestion charge of data that's going into uh, that, that Sentinel is processing. So that's why we have two uh, charges there. Great, thanks. Uh, the next one is how are the logs separated out by the OMS agent or Windows agent as basic versus log analytics? How is that controlled? Good question. So that, yeah. that is currently not, yeah. Not currently. That is, yeah, I was going to say that that is currently not possible. So it will be possible, but right now it's either going to one or the other. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, our next one is when we are searching data from log archive tier, would it scan the data only from log archive or also search logs from uh, law? Yeah, I think we answered that question already, uh, like depending on the time frame that you provide to the to the search. Uh, great. Well, that seems to be all the questions that we had. Um, thank you, Innocent, Javier and Jeremy for being our guests today and for an excellent presentation. And thank you to the rest of the team who helped answer questions. At the same time, I would like to remind the listeners that the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements is to visit our landing page at aka.ms slash security community. And while there, you'll find easy ways to navigate and find the resources and learning content relevant to our security products and their communities. A good start would be browsing our bite-sized product videos, ninja trainings, recordings of past webinars, GitHub communities, and more. We love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars. 
please take a minute submitting your webinar feedback at aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. Thank you and see you next time. Goodbye.